ready for a dive into the Arctic Ocean. I've given talks about the taxonomic diversity of the 221 species of Arctic marine fishes of Canada. Now I'll talk about the many adaptations exhibited by these fascinating animals in very challenging environments. Here's a quick overview. 20 species of jawless fishes, sharks and rays, then the bony fishes, eel pouts, salmonids like Arctic char, sculpins, snail fishes, and flatfishes, a total of 58 families. Ice formation during freeze up results in hypersaline conditions in which seawater can be several degrees below zero. How do Arctic marine fishes adapt to these extreme conditions? They do so very well and in multiple intriguing ways. All animal life will experience cellular damage if their bodies are exposed to or if they're immersed in sub-zero water. These conditions do not exist on the Beaufort Shelf, which is shallow and has massive amounts of heat and fresh water input from the, the Mackenzie River. Salmonids such as the Dolly Varden char, broad whitefish, and the Inkanu, a 20 kilo whitefish, are anadromous, meaning that they spawn in fresh water but live in the ocean, returning to rivers in winter months. Other Beaufort shelf species benefit from the relatively warm, productive environment. Pacific herring are found in nearshore areas in kilometer-long schools. Two species of flatfishes are found in shallow areas, estuaries, and even upriver in fresh water. In the Eastern Arctic, it's deep and cold, and hypersaline conditions only occur at the surface. Look at these depths, though. 3,000 meters in the Labrador Sea, 2,000 meters in Baffin Bay. The major feature here is a vast cold volume of cold, deep ocean. Some species migrate. The Greenland halibut, the dominant fish predator in the Eastern Arctic, spawns in the deep slope area of Davis Strait. Adults disperse all through that region. A longer migration is made by snipe eels, which live in deep midwaters down to 4,000 meters. They drift vertically and feed on crustaceans like shrimp and amphipods. The adults swim to the Sargasso Sea to spawn and die. In these vast cold depths, one way to communicate is through light. Many species in this region are bioluminescent. The boa dragonfish uses light to attract prey and even to signal potential mates. Some anglerfish species take this one step further by having the, one, the much smaller male permanently attached to the female. This novel approach takes the guesswork out of finding a mate. This rather mundane looking fish is one of five species of tube shoulders, or marine smelts, in the Eastern Arctic. It is an extraordinary escape artist. When attacked, it secretes a cloud of luminous fluid to confuse a predator. Many species live on the seafloor. 14 species of sculpins live at varied depths. Species in shallow areas have blood proteins that act as an antifreeze. They also have multiple sharp spines for defense against pr predation. Sculpins get a bad rap. Inuit referred to them as ugly fish, but I think they're rather cute. They're ubiquitous in the Arctic and an integral component of all benthic environments. And some of them do taste good too. There are four species of wolf fishes in the Canadian Arctic. They're found in cold coastal waters, feeding on mollusks, crustaceans, sea urchins, and sea stars. They're usually found in rocky bottoms, in shallow water, always with a home territory. The Arctic cod is the most abundant fish in the Arctic. They're found mainly in the sympagic, or under ice environment. Their adaptation is that they use the ubiquitous sea ice to their advantage to eat low in the food chain, and reproduce and grow very quickly. And this is a sympagic ecosystem. Algae on the underside of the ice are eaten by crustaceans, which in turn are eaten by Arctic cod, which are central to this food web. Many marine mammals, birds and fishes, eat the cod. While the Arctic cod lives fast and dies young, the Greenland shark uses an opposite strategy. This species is the longest lived vertebrate, radiocarbon dating, of the eye lenses show that they can live 400 years. They're also the same size as great white sharks. 
and now the enigmatic eelpouts, the family of the most speciose in the Arctic with 32 species. These small benthic fishes are very successful and identifying them is a huge challenge. <laughs> I'll conclude with a plug for a book. This was published last year and is the latest, most comprehensive source of information on Canadian Arctic fishes. This book and its associated database are a critical baseline of information at a time of accelerating change.